Meet the littoral combat ships, U.S. Navy's 500 million small surface combatants. More than 17 years ago, the U.S. Navy christened the first of a new class of warship designed to operate in near-shore environments. The so-called littoral combat ships, or LCS, would be fast and agile, capable of countering 21st century coastal threats such as missile firing boats, small submarines, and mines. The LCS is a class of small surface combatants equipped with capabilities specifically designed to address global challenges in littoral regions. The LCS is intended to facilitate joint force access in these littorals, operating either independently or within high threat environments as part of a networked battle force that includes larger multi-mission surface combatants. The LCS has been a controversial program from its inception, experiencing delays and cost overruns, not to mention severe criticism from elements of the national security community. Perhaps no ship in recent memory has been subject to more criticism than the LCS. Many think LCS is the wrong ship at the wrong time. Some compare the ship to a guided missile frigate and find it wanting. Others think the Navy would be better served with fast attack craft or small corvettes festooned with anti-ship missiles. Still others believe a purpose-built single mission vessel is the best choice for the mine warfare mission. All of these alternatives would be potentially attractive choices, provided the Navy's future fleet had a need for such ships. Instead, the U.S. Navy needs a different component for its battle force, an affordable, self-deployable, and reconfigurable multi-role warship designed for naval battle network operations in contested littorals. An idea is born. In 2003, the Navy launched its first experimental LCS, Sea Fighter, designated as a Fast Sea Frame, or FSF-1. As the Oliver Hazard Perry Osprey-class Minehunter and Avenger-class mine countermeasure ships were reaching the end of their lives, the U.S. Navy released the LCS requirement. Lockheed Martin and General Dynamics submitted design proposals. Two competing designs were selected for the LCS program, one from Lockheed Martin based on a monohull, and another from General Dynamics, later acquired by Austal USA, based on a trimaran hull design. These two designs represented different approaches to achieving the Navy's requirements for speed, flexibility, and modularity. The ultimate decision was to fund both designs as two variants of the class. Secretary of the Navy Gordon R. England announced that the first LCS would be named USS Freedom. LCS-1 was commissioned on November 8, 2008 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The LCS-2 ship was commissioned on January 6, 2010 in Mobile, Alabama. Striking a balance. One of the issues with littoral combat ships is their lack of firepower, and when combined with the aluminum hull of the Independence variants, concerns about ship survivability persist. The Navy's worked to address those issues and has consistently upgraded the original platform to allow it to accommodate a wider range of weapon systems. The Navy continues its efforts to improve LCS capabilities with a recent focus on testing a new combat system. This system aims to qualify the littoral combat ship for military missions through a series of upcoming live fire exercises, ultimately enhancing the ship's readiness for major maritime warfare by better integrating streamlining and improving on board. Part of the effort includes the introduction of new government-furnished equipment likely intended to improve fire control, targeting, and integration across a group of shipboard weapon systems such as CRAM. The ship launch SeaWish uses a phalanx gun capable of firing 4,500 small projectiles per minute to blanket an area. In contrast, the Sea Ram replaces the gun with larger, longer-range rolling airframe missiles. Unlike the Sea Wiz, it uses a 20mm cannon to shoot down threats close to a ship. Sea Ram fires a rolling airframe missile from an 11-missile battery. The rolling airframe missile is what defense experts call a fire-and-forget missile, meaning it uses a radio frequency detection technology along with a heat-seeking infrared sensor to find its way toward an approaching threat in order to intercept and destroy it. In 2019, the Navy installed the Naval Strike Missile on the San Diego-based Gabriel Giffords. 
The missile weighs slightly over 880 pounds and has a range of more than 115 miles. Despite the NSM having a greater range than the Harpoon anti-ship missile, LCSs lack long-range fire control systems to detect targets at such distances. The potential evolution of littoral combat ships is highlighted by the likely use of the standard Missile 6, also known as an SM-6. On September 18, 2023, the Independence-class LCS Savannah departed San Diego with unconventional cargo on its flight deck, a 40-foot-long gray container and a trailer-mounted radar, both connected by long neon-orange cables to the vessel's superstructure. The U.S. Pacific Fleet later confirmed a successful test launch of SM-6 supersonic missiles in the Eastern Pacific, signaling a way that the lightly armed ship class could one day contribute to a conventional naval battle. Naval Surface Forces said the test is part of ongoing experimentation to see if a mobile launch system could work aboard ships like LCS. Despite these advancements, the costly nature of the LCS class poses challenges for the Navy, hindering its ability to fulfill the originally envisioned missions. Nevertheless, with advanced core weapon systems, broad combat capabilities, and the latest in hull design and propulsion systems, as stated on Navy.mil, the LCS is positioned and ready for a variety of missions, whether in littoral waters or deep seas. Core Ship Weapons The core ship weapons on a modern naval vessel play a crucial role in both defensive and offensive capabilities. One prominent component is the 57mm Mark 110 gun system, capable of firing automatic salvos at up to 220 rounds per minute. The Mark 110 gun mount delivers high rates of fire with extreme accuracy, making it effective against surface, airborne, and shore-based threats. The RIM 116 RAM on the Freedom variant enhances the vessel's self-defense capabilities, designed as a high-firepower, low-cost self-defense system against anti-ship cruise missiles and other asymmetric threats, the RAM is a crucial component. Meanwhile, the Independence variant class is equipped with the C-RAM. Recently, the C-RAM system has also been installed on the latest version of the Freedom class LCS. The LCS is also fitted with the Alex decoy system. Surface Warfare in addition to the ship's organic weapon systems, the Surface Warfare package includes 30mm gun systems, 11m rigid hull inflatable boats, surface-to-surface -surface missile module, MH-60R equipped with Hellfire missiles, and Fire Scout vertical takeoff unmanned aerial vehicle. The Surface Warfare mission module is intended to deal with small boats and is called the best swarm killer in the Surface fleet. Mine Countermeasures The Mine Countermeasure module is designed to provide mine sweeping, remotely detecting and bypassing mines, and mine hunting, detecting, and disabling. It was envisioned to perform influence mine hunting via acoustic and magnetic signatures rather than contact or mechanical mine hunting. The Mine Countermeasure includes the Airborne Laser Mine Detection System, Airborne Mine Neutralization System, Remote Mine Hunting System, unmanned influence sweep system, and knife fish unmanned underwater vehicle. These cutting-edge systems collectively contribute to the Navy's mine countermeasure capabilities in littoral environments. Anti-submarine warfare. Littoral combat ships were supposed to be equipped to hunt and destroy submarines with an interlinked package of sonar devices, helicopters, and torpedoes. But the systems didn't effectively communicate with one another, the towed sonar couldn't function properly in the vessel's wake, and the Freedom class is considered too loud to hunt submarines. The Navy canceled that function in 2022. Retirement The Navy has tried retiring many of the littoral combat ships years before they reach their expected lifespan. Ships designed to last for 25 years are being mothballed after less than a decade of service. According to the Congressional Budget Office, each ship cost about $500 million, some more than $600 million, after factoring in the mission packages. I don't think we're going to be decommissioning many that are all sunshine, no rain clouds, said Mark Montgomery, a retired Navy Rear Admiral and a senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracy's think tank. I'm pretty confident that we're decommissioning things that are maintenance burdens. Among those that have been retired are the USS Freedom, USS Independence, USS Coronado, USS Milwaukee, USS Detroit, 
USS Sioux City, and more. Looking ahead, the Navy plans to decommission many other LCS warships, citing their ineffective anti-submarine warfare systems, inability to fulfill the Navy's missions, frequent breakdowns, and structural failures in high-stress areas of the ships. The future of the LCS remains uncertain. Only time will tell if these ships will become obsolete.